Hey all, welcome to ShareTrack. This is Raj here. Uh, friends, today I want to uh, talk to you about uh, Ginkgo Bioworks. In fact, I'm thinking that this would be the first in a series of uh, videos that I'm going to bring out on uh, Ginkgo Bioworks and I would like to have a separate video on each of their business areas because they've got so many different areas and we have just had a uh, on the surface view of Ginkgo Bioworks and uh, I always had a sneaky feeling that this could be snake oil but off late I'm more and more convinced that uh, this is legit and um, I'll also explain the reasons why in this video and uh, if uh, this is a good company and we are at the bottom right now uh, then I think um, this sh uh, this uh, share debuted at a much much higher price so there's a long way up uh, and there's a lot of money to be made but instead of blindly dumping the money into um, the company, I thought why not uh, have a look at all their uh, different lines of businesses uh, so that we can understand who are the players that are engaging with Ginkgo and what is Ginkgo offering to them and uh, each of those areas how lucrative uh, they could be. Uh, uh, those things will give us a much more granular understanding of DNA instead of this just uh, synthetic biology company at a high level. Uh, so that's what I plan to do. And this is the first in the series. Uh, and uh, in this video today, I'm going to be focusing more on uh, APIs. And before you go saying, what the hell is an API? Well, watch till the end, I explain everything. So with that said, uh, I would actually like to start the video, but before we proceed, uh, I would request that please subscribe if you haven't already done so, uh, because uh, we are very close to 4,000 subscribers and YouTube stats says that more than 50% of our viewers are not subscribers. So uh, I hope you could uh, subscribe, it's absolutely free. That said, let's get started. Welcome back friends. Uh, Ginkgo Bioworks has its fingers in many pies. There are, um, I'm trying to give the slices in different ways. Uh, uh, these uh, areas of activities are pharma and biotech, food and agriculture, industrial and environmental, uh, as well as consumer and technology. Another way of looking at the offerings as per their website is uh, therapeutics and vaccine or TX and vaccine. Uh, enzymes, uh, proteins, small molecules, strain optimization, fermentation and uh, scale up and finally biosecurity. In pharma and biotech we have cell therapy, gene therapy, small molecule, uh, biologics, um, RNA and vaccines as well as microbiome segments. Um, if we look at all of these uh, Ginkgo Bioworks has acquired smaller companies with uh, special expertise and cobbled them together to create this platform and to create this whole range of uh, offerings. So their uh, acquisitions have been very uh, strategic and there have been many of them. Uh, prime partners among uh, the segments that they operate in are uh, Biogen in gene therapy, uh, Roche, uh, Merck and uh, Lilly uh, in small molecules and they have no Nordisk in uh, biologics and uh, Moderna in uh, RNA and uh, vaccines. So those are some of the big names. This is not all. They have a whole lot of other partners who are taking their services. Uh, or, and um, I haven't mentioned them here because they are smaller companies. Uh, there was this um, uh, short sellers report, uh, Scorpion Capital, I think where they allege that uh, most of the Ginkgo Bioworks uh, uh, contracts are coming from their own companies, but the proportion of their own companies um, giving business is decreasing uh, progressively with every uh, subsequent year. So that's a very good positive. And also if you look at it this way, if, um, if, if a subsidiary uh, needs something the parent company produces or if a parent company needs something that a subsidiary produces, they are going to be the preferred partners rather than sending the money to a third party outside. So I don't think we should look at it with too much of suspicions. Uh, today we are going to focus on API business and the latest news is that Century and Pharmaceuticals has expanded their existing partnership with Ginkgo uh, uh, based on success of uh, previous work together and uh, this partnership will enable Sentient to broaden its uh, portfolio of environmentally friendly APIs. Uh, 
The first initiative was started in 2021, and in that DNA delivered an enzyme which significantly improved efficiency, uh, thus reducing the environmental footprint of enzymatic production of uh, amoxicillin and uh, cephalexin APIs. The idea of the enhanced collaboration is to build on the success uh, to progressively migrate more APIs to this environmentally uh, gentle method of production and reduce carbon and waste emissions. As always, the financials of this deal are not known. However, I became a believer uh, when uh, Ingelheim signed a $405 million deal with DNA. Uh, the proof of uh, concept-based engagement from Sentient right now uh, further cements my confidence on uh, DNA. I'm holding on to my DNA stock for now. Uh, please let me know what you guys are uh, uh, doing and uh, do you own any uh, DNA uh, stock or do you plan to buy? What is your price target? And if you have any information on DNA, please share it in the comment section uh, so that the community can benefit. Well, friends, you may ask what is an API and um, here's what an API is. It's called active pharmaceutical ingredient. Uh, it's the key component of a pharmaceutical drug that produces the intended therapeutic effect. It is the biologically active part of a medication that interacts with the body to diagnose, prevent, treat, or cure a, a disease. APIs are also uh, referred to as the bulk drugs and uh, they are responsible for the pharma pharmacological activity of a drug. APIs can be um, derived from various sources including plants, animals, microorganisms or chemical synthesis. They undergo extensive research and development before being used in the formulation of a drug. API production involves several stages such as discovery, development, synthesis, purification and characterization. Once the API is obtained, uh, it is com uh, combined with other inactive ingredients uh, known as uh, excipients uh, to create the final pharmaceutical dosage form such as tablets, capsules, injections or syrups. The excipients help in the delivery stability and overall uh, formulations of the drug. Uh, APIs are subject to strict uh, regulations and quality standards enforced by regulatory authorities like the FDA or uh, EMA. Uh, these regula uh, regulations ensure sure the safety efficacy uh, consistency of APIs used in pharmaceutical products. Suffice to say they go through a similar uh, cycle that uh, our genomic uh, therapies go through with the FDA uh, before they get approved. It's important to note that APIs are not limited to human medicine but also encompass veterinary uh, medicines, diagnostics and other healthcare products. Uh, furthermore, APIs can have different levels of complexity ranging from simple compounds to highly complex biologics such as proteins or antibodies. Pharmaceutical companies generally outsource the production of APIs to specialized manufacturers who have the expertise in their synthesis and purification. This allows uh, pharmaceutical companies to focus on formulation, uh, clinical trials, marketing, and uh, distribution of the final uh, drug product. In summary, APIs are the active substances responsible for the therapeutic effects of pharmaceutical uh, drugs. Uh, they undergo a rigorous uh, process of development and production and their quality and safety are closely monitored to ensure effective uh, healthcare pro products. And Centriant is one such company that manufactures uh, APIs in bulk and now it is starting to use uh, uh, Ginkgo Bioworks uh, uh, eco-friendly um, uh, method for creating enzymes and uh, APIs. So as they said, API can also be protein and uh, DNA is involved in proteomics as well. So uh, it's a very good match. And if uh, DNA ends up being the back office for all this, uh, the way I see the revenues growing is that uh, DNA continues to put uh, more and more uh, uh, facilities uh, where they can have their foundry and uh, they can manufacture and uh, deliver the products or they could uh, uh, create the strain and then license the strain to a company and take a share of the revenue uh, when um, at the end of the year from those companies. So there are various revenue models that uh, Ginkgo Bioworks can get into and uh, it's definitely in my opinion it's definitely likely to have a, um, a, a decent size f footprint in the future dollars uh, that are earned in the pharmaceutical uh, space. Uh, so uh, if you look at it from another perspective uh, a whole lot of um, pharmaceutical uh, revenue uh, 
uh, area will still stay intact despite the uh, CRISPR and uh, genomic sequencing revolution and the uh, emergence of uh, gene therapies because uh, the gene therapies are going to be focused on uh, solving um, uh, gene gene related uh, disorders and uh, then we get into the area of uh, proteomics and mrna uh, in all those areas i think uh, uh, ginkgo can uh, compete and uh, they will still be uh, high revenue generating areas because right now uh, genetic disorders uh, do not have any cure uh, from the pharmaceutical side it's more of a maintenance uh, kind of uh, uh, therapy that uh, that goes on so I, I'm hopeful that uh, DNA is going to be a multi-bagger. That's the term I use for a stock, which if you buy for $1 later on becomes $10, that thereby multiplying tenfold. I'm not saying that DNA is going to multiply tenfold, but I am saying that DNA is going to multiply big time. That's my personal opinion. Again, friends, this is not uh, financial advice, so please consult your own financial advisor or do your own due diligence before you invest in any uh, stock. So with that, my friends, I'd like to bring this video to an end. Uh, I'll, um, I'll be working on uh, more DNA videos, uh, but I can't promise when I'm going to bring them out because I have too many things going on simultaneously at this point of time. Uh, and I, I need to dedicate some time to come up with a production calendar. So I got to get some, uh, some system put into uh, place uh, because my initial uh, rudimentary system has helped me come this far. Uh, now our subscribers are increasing, the programming efforts are increasing. As you know that we have taken away the Hindi HIV viewers into a separate Hindi channel. That's almost crossed 800 um, subscribers right now in the last two months. And it's hurtling towards 1,000 uh, subscribers. So there's a whole lot of activity going on out there. And in this channel also, I think uh, we are doing pretty well. We are almost close to 4,000. So friends, I can't express how fortunate I am to have such great subscribers like yourself and to experience so much success in such a short time because many YouTube channels take a long time to reach this, uh, uh, this situation uh, with around uh, close to 4,000 subscribers. So thank you one and all for all your support and all your motivation to keep this going. And uh, with that, I would like to end this video. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.